Welcome back to the shop, everyone. It's been a minute. I've had various things going on and not enough time in the shop. But we're back. Uh, so what we have in front of us here is we have some black walnut and some sapilli. Uh, this is going to be a upright standing jewelry box. It's going to have uh, four or five drawers, actually. One is a false drawer. Uh, there's going to be a lid on top of that. Uh, so I've used uh, just a brief template to kind of map out what that looks like because I want to use the grain on the front to kind of match everything up. Uh, the other piece here is going to be the sides. There's actually going to be swing out sides on it where your necklaces hang in. Um, and like I said, Sapilli in the background, that's going to be that kind of main carcass case. Uh, and I have another piece over there that we're going to break down. So let's start making some sawdust. All right, we're at the rudder table. Uh, and what we've got here, this is the base of the box that we're putting together. Uh, I've drawn a center line on here so I know where my bit needs to go. A center line on the table, and I have my back piece here lined up with the edge of the bit. Uh, so what we're gonna do, if you look on the other side here, you can see that I have where my center lines are gonna go across, we're gonna do a sliding dovetail. So we're gonna cut that in, uh, cut this side out. We have a stop on either side here, uh, and then flip that around and do it again. So sliding dovetails have been cut in to the base and the uprights. Uh, they're a little bit snug, um, having to wiggle them in there a little bit. Uh, but the mistake I wanted to point out is right here. Um, you can see this is where I plunged in from up top. Um, and what that did is it, it gave me a wider, slightly wider cut than the actual dovetail uh, edges. So it's not the end of the world. So you can see that uh, my material just covers it up. There's a tiny, tiny little little hair right there that I don't even know if you can see that on camera. Uh, this one in the front there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a notch out of here so that slides over top so you won't be able to see that. Uh, but yeah, there's gonna be a tiny, tiny little gap right there. Um, I'm gonna try and do something to fill that. You won't really see it, but uh, I wanted to point it out that it's just a slight um, mistake and mistakes do happen and you have to figure out how to fix those.
Okay, things are starting to come together. Uh, what we got in front here is obviously the drawer faces that are going to be all the drawers. So we're going to have the five drawers. Uh, this top one is just a false drawer. Uh, it's going to, it's dadoed into the case on the top and into the shelf on the top there. So that's never going to move. Uh, I use a highly technical um, calibration tool there called playing cards uh, for getting my spacing. Uh, they're actually plasticized playing cards so they don't absorb moisture when they're out here in the shop. Uh, and then I just play with how many of them I'm going to use to get the spacing I want. Uh, these ones I'm using three playing cards which works out to 0 0.8 millimeter, let's call it one millimeter. So we're getting like just under a sixteenth of an inch and spacing there, which I think looks fairly decent. Uh, I'm a little off on the top here, but uh, that doesn't bother me too much. Again, because this drawer isn't going to move, I'd rather have a little bit of space so that the drawer slides in and out nicely. Uh, so yeah, uh, next what we're going to do there is we're going to glue up all the drawer boxes. I've got all my parts cut. I'm uh, just going to do some quick sanding. Uh, and then once this, once that's done, uh, we'll glue them all together and then we can start sliding them back in using the same spacing, uh, same arrangement, and then we'll be able to mark out where the data is going to go into the case sides on either side and move on to that side. So yeah, uh, everything's looking pretty good so far and uh, we'll just continue on.
So this was the little piece that you just saw me planing. Uh, I don't have a drum sander, so to sneak up on this 3 16 um, I used the hand plane. And now what we've got to do, as you can see, that's my cut. So I've got to take off just a little bit. So I'm just going to plane off the top of this by hand until that fits in there. And then we'll slide it in and we'll assemble this door and see what it looks like. So I just cut off not even a 16th of an inch, probably 32nd of an inch. It was just a little bit too long in the bottom here. Uh, so now we're going to slide the panel in. I hope we're going to slide the panel in. the finished door, well, finished, um, assembled door ready for glue up. Now we just have to sand everything down uh, that's going to be exposed and then we will glue that up and we have to cut some hinges in and all that fun stuff. But I'm pretty happy with it. This looks pretty good. Um, I've got a, there's a little tiny stain in the back there. I'm gonna have to make sure that that is toward the back so it's not that noticeable. Um, it's just a little little pocket that I that was inside the wood that you couldn't see. Uh, but it's hidden in the shadow. I don't think it'll be too noticeable. I also think I have to finish that panel before I do the glue up because it's going to be really hard to get into here uh, to put on a coating. That might be a little bit challenging. I also have to check for square on that door so that it sits flat against the, the face of the unit. Yeah, so let's throw that on the, on the box itself and see what it looks like. All right, so there are the doors clamped in place. Um, pretty happy with everything sitting. Uh, so that's the sides as they come around. So the next thing that we've got to do, everything's kind of moving around on me here. Just keep that fairly square is on the side profile. We're going to cut curves into the face here that are actually going to transfer around and into the face of this, which is a little bit terrifying, or at least terrifying to me. Uh, but that's what's going to end up. But first, I got to do a lot of sanding, make sure everything's square, uh, and that these things are going to sit flush. Uh, so I'm going to take everything apart, sand the sides all down. Uh, a bunch of sanding on those first, get those ready to go. Um, and kind of go from there. So we've got some, we got some stuff to do. I also have to finish these drawers. Uh, they're just all held into place. Uh, and I haven't fine tuned everything yet, but uh, pretty happy with the things are turning out. Uh, no major issues. My dovetails aren't super tight on this side. I had some sloppy work there. So I gotta try and fix that once I get that all glued up. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty happy with it.
I've got all my hinges cut in. And now we have to try and drive this off. And then we can have a look at the base. All right, uh, this is the base that you just saw me hammer off. Uh, what I did is I don't have a fancy store-bought curve, so I made one uh, out of a piece of the same material. Uh, and then I did two curves. So one is the, what we're gonna end up with. So this inside curve is what's gonna follow this inside line that goes along and behind there, that's what's gonna end up being the unit itself. And then the other one, I just basically moved this over, hold it on those lines like so, like so. Uh, and then what that does, it gives me this exact same curve, so I didn't change this at all. Uh, so I'm going to cut that off on the bandsaw, and then I'm going to make sure that it's smooth, and I'm going to use that as my template to cut the top. And then once I have the top cut, I can put the whole box back together and I can start marking out the drawer faces and the door sides. Um, and then I'm gonna start cutting curves into everything, which is a little bit terrifying. All right, uh, we have cut the bottom and the top, and I have transferred the shape of the curve onto the top here. Uh, I cut this out on the bandsaw, and I've shaped it by hand uh, using a hand plane and a rasp. Um, looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna transfer these all the way down uh, and continue cutting these one after another uh, and then marking all the way through. I've got the side pieces here, um, they're clamped, they're screwed in, the hinges are on, but uh, I've transferred the curve onto there. Uh, I'm going to cut those off on the table saw, or at least rough them out on the table saw, and then I'll finish those off by hand as well. So, uh, a little stressful, but things are moving along, so not haven't had a heart attack yet. Well, that was a scary cut. Uh, I've been stressing about that for a couple of days now, uh, but it turned out really well. Um, so far, everything looks like it lines up pretty good. Obviously, you can see there's some saw marks there that I got to smooth out. I left things a little tiny bit oversized though, because I knew I was gonna have to fine tune it all. Um, so that's where I'm at now. And if I walk this over, so you can see my edges there, everything lines up pretty good. And then on the other side, you can see there's a little tiny bit, little tiny bit of an edge on there, right in here, but that's okay. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put that in the vise and take it off. Uh, but I'm gonna line up with the top here. My top is pretty close, so I'm overall pretty happy. I'm gonna go in there and uh, take some hand tools to it and straighten or round those edges off. And then I'll put the whole thing back together, clamp it up and do some sanding.
so I got the new feet cut and there's just the ever so tiny amount of gap there and there. Uh, so something wasn't bang on when I cut this out. Maybe my template wasn't sitting quite right. Uh, so I'm just going to try and scrape just a tiny little bit there where I've got my, my pencil. And I'm just using a card scraper. Not taking very much. You just got to take a hair off there. Really close. There we go. It's super tight fit now. Perfect, because that's going to be the front. Um, easily noticeable. But once I clamp that in there, glue and clamp, uh, it will be perfect. So I am happy with that. If you made it this far in the video, I'm sure you're anxiously awaiting a look at the finished product. So without further ado, here we go. There is the finished unit wide open with all the drawers sides open. This took me about 40 hours, I would say, maybe 50 hours in total. I didn't completely track all my time on it. There's the unit closed. Uh, I will mention, you'll see that when I push on these, there's a little click. I actually installed a little pin in here. Um, I, I think they're called cabinet pins or something like that. There's a little tiny grommet on the side. So I had to drill a little tiny hole in there. And then this just clicks into place, just keeps everything closed. And there's the side view. And the back. And the last side. And then back to front. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, if you have any comments, any feedback on the video or the build itself, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will happily read them and respond if you choose to do so. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. That lets me know that people actually want to see this and I continue to make videos. Thanks again.